Hey developers, so today we're gonna talk about a really cool way of creating a poor man's view X inside view three. Yeah, so we're gonna take a look at a quick example of how to set this up, kind of the pros and cons of it and why you may or may wanna not use this on your next project. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a big fan of Vue.js, React, Angular. If you guys like those topics, make sure you click that subscribe button. And also I put a link to my mailing list below. So if you wanna get a free view cheat sheet, make sure you click on that. You can check that out too. All right, so let's talk about state management. Now inside our single page application apps, our single page apps like view, you are going to want to pass information from one component to the other, from one route to the other. And there's a very easy way of doing that. And is that is to add view X to your app. But sometimes you don't want to use Vuex because it is adds more boilerplate, is a little more complicated. I think most apps, I think it's so much easier to use than something like Redux or NGRX that you see in different other frameworks or libraries. I think Vuex is really easy to add, but there is a really easy way to add it inside Vue 3 that I want to show you guys. So I have a really, once again, a very simple app using a counter. I think this is uh, the, the simplest form of way to show how to share state between different places. I have a state here. I have a state times two, like basically computed property that takes whatever is in the state and doubles it. And I have a button that just updates the counter. And you can see the second route here that the, this number here matches because it is being stored inside some sort of state that is being shared between the different routes. And if you click here, you can see this. And also I have a child component which also is pulling the information you can see here, it's also saved. So we have this information saved in multiple routes, child routes, and it's all being pulled from the same place, which is exactly what we want. Now keep in mind, if you refresh this, the store uh, doesn't know, it does, it's not pulling from local storage or anything, so that it just resets back to one. So if I reset it, get back to one, that's what we expect. So let's see how we would do this inside view. Now it's really simple. Uh, I went ahead and just to save time on this video because I just want to make a quick short one for you guys to learn really quickly. And if you are confused at any time, you may want to take a look at the official documentation of Vuex, make a look, uh, take a look at the Vue CLI. But I created a, a brand new app using Vue CLI. While you're creating Vue, the Vue app, it asks you if you want to use Vue 2 or Vue 3 Preview. I choose Vue 3 Preview and if you and if you look at the package.json, you could see Vue 3 here, uh, which is exactly what we wanted. We're actually using Vue Router 4, uh, but you do not see Vue X here anywhere. And the way I have this, this app set up is I have this home, which has this times state inc increment times, and I'm pulling it all from this file called vclone, which is in the root folder. And by the way, if you don't realize this at is an alias to the source folder, it just makes it really quickly. You can add it in there. I know a lot of, Developers, view developers are kind of borrowing the React way of pulling in things using the use. You don't have to use the word use inside when you're pulling like use store, but you can just pull it in any way you want. Really the heart of what I want to show you guys is in this file. So I'm going to just kind of go through it one by one. By one. First, we absolutely, need, we absolutely need to pull in some files from view. Um, and one thing really nice about view three is we have this ref, we have also have reactive and we have computed, we're gonna use state. So the first one is we're gonna grab, we're gonna use a state variable, we're gonna call it state and we're gonna use ref one. So there's also a talk about like when to use reactive and when to use to ref. So when I wanna use primitive values, I usually use ref. If I wanna use something more complicated, I use reactive. So that's, since I'm just using number here, I'm using ref. And now I wanna create a computed property. So I just did this times two here, which is computed a state dot value times two. Since I'm using state, I have to do, I have to use dot value if I want to double it. And then I'm going to have an increment method. So it just takes in an amount and it adds it into the state dot value. So if I want to increment it by one, two, three, I can have this in here. This is basically the arrow syntax ES6. And then I need to export it all. So as long as I'm exporting the state times two and in ink, now I can access this. Uh, I can destructure it and access it inside any one of my components. Now the important thing to, to remember here is this ref. This is what makes it reactive and allows us to basically save it and share it between all the different components and routes inside our app because we're using ref. Or if we use reactive, it would work the same way. Um, so state.value. All right, so I'm gonna save this. And the way uh, after we save it here, 
I'll, I'll take a look, I'll show you exactly the other components. So in our home view, I already kind of wrote this out just to save time, but I'm pulling in the vclone from vclone and then I'm destructuring state increment in times two. State will actually show the state. Uh, times two will show the, uh, the computed property, which times it by two. And then I have this increment, which I'm passing in a one and that will increment the value. So once again, you can see here it's working uh, as we expect it. Here's the home. You can see here the computer properties doubling. And then in the orders, which I guess is just a, a random second component I created, don't worry about the naming, I just called it orders. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm doing hello from route orders. I'm pulling in the state the exact same way I did before at vclone. And then also I'm destructuring state and times to an increment. I'm really only using state in an increment, not the times two, but that's fine. And you can see here, it's just displaying as I expect it. Now you, I did one other thing to show you that you don't actually need to use provide an inject. That is another way inside view that you can take deeply nested components and share information. Uh, when I was originally researching this a long time ago, I thought view three to recreate this sort of view X way of doing things you needed to have a provide and check and actually that's not needed. So I grabbed in this other component. I, the other component's really simple. It just once again imports vclone and then shows the state of it. And you can see here, everything is matching up. Now, one thing, other thing to mention, if you look at this and you're like, okay, what is the difference between this and vuex? Well, here's the state. Uh, you could say, um, we can even wanted to, we could uh, return state like a getter and make it read only if we wanted to. This is sort of like uh, a mutation that we're doing here with this increment or an action. So you can sort of line this up to what how Vuex works. Like this would be um, probably more of a mutation, but you can certainly do actions too as well. This is your state. Um, this is more of like a getter, you, sh you could assume, because now you're just using this time to, times two and it's a computed property. Now, if you wanted to actually add some read only properties in here, for example, in Vuex, you normally don't change the state directly. You can add in this property called read only. And then I could do something like this state colon read only, and then put in the state there. And this will make a read only state so you can't uh, change it. But if I refresh it, it still works the same way. So if I look in the air, uh, console, you don't see any errors. So everything looks fine. And now you can't directly mutate the state without using the uh, mutation like this increment mutation. So one reason, l let's talk about one reason why you may wanna keep using Vuex. First, Vuex is a, a pretty big project. There's lots and lots of documentations about it. And it's really powerful, especially when you talk about actions, mutations, the way you can have modules. So if you have lots of different state, you can break it up into different places. It has uh, first party, it has TypeScript support. So it's really, really powerful. So, and there's so many plugins and documentation on it. I'd almost say at this point, if you're on a really simple app, you can definitely use something like this to hold your state in. But if you have anything more complicated, I would just go with Vuex. Uh, it looks like uh, as of now, they have 4.0 RC2. So they're really close in having the new Vuex 4 out, which should have really great TypeScript support. And it's created by the good people at Vue. It's an official Vue.js library. So you know you're, you are getting quality when you're using this. So that's one of the reasons why I would continue to use Vuex because it's supported. It, uh, it does a lot more. It's great for larger apps. And this would be perfect for a simple app. I could imagine though, as your app scales, this would become very confusing. You might have multiple of these files. You might have namespace clashes. You can have all sorts of problems, which is really solved by Vuex. So let me know in the comments below, are you using this way inside your Vue 3 apps? Have you even started using Vue 3? It's still technically, uh, it's released, but they mentioned a preview in Vue CLI. So it's not 100% uh, adopted everywhere, I would say, definitely not, not for sure. So let me know, leave a comment below. I really appreciate it, thanks.